Hi, it's Warren here from War Colmenoy. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we're here in one of the other spray booths in uh, Aerobrace Engineered Technologies in War Colmenoy, here in South Wales. What we're going to show you today is another piece of equipment that War Colmenoy designed and manufactured many, many years ago, which is still available today, and that is the spray welder. The history of the spray weld is quite interesting. It actually dates back to 1946. 1946, can you believe that's 75 years ago? 75 years we've been making this, this type of torch. Obviously it's changed a little bit, it's been updated, it's been modified, new materials have become available, just, 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 just like cars and motorbikes and things like that. So, you know, we've been making these things for an awful long time and it's, it's, it's a fantastic piece of equipment. One which we want to bring you a post of and show you exactly how it works and the technology that goes into uh, the operation of the torch. It's fairly straightforward. What we want to show you is, uh, is, is actually a piece of equipment from the glass container industry. Um, it's, it's this little component here. It's, uh, it, it's called a plug or a blow blow plug. And these things are made all over Europe and they end up in uh, glass container plant plants um, as, uh, as part of the mould set for making bottles and jars and that sort of thing. And uh, many people use a fuse welder type um, piece of equipment to, to repair and reclaim these things, which technically speaking there's nothing actually wrong with that, uh, but a lot of people turn, to, uh, turn or rotate the part uh, and use a fuse welder and then uh, during subsequent final machining very often find there's evidence of porosity normally at the interface and the reason for that is the fuse weld process is probably not that well optimized for coating rotating or moving parts whereas the spray welder is so if you if you're doing these parts or other rotating parts shafts from uh, motors fans seal areas that sort of thing and the part is is circular the optimized way of, of, of applying a, a, a very good fused coating is is with the spray welder uh, piece of equipment uh, that way you get a, 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 a very dense concise consistent coating around the entire uh, diameter of, of the part so that's what we're going to do today now the spray welder uh, consists when you buy this as, as, as a kit of a torch uh, which it doesn't look as though there's a great deal to this there's a switch on the back and there's a lever on the front the switch on the back literally turns the powder on and off and the lever at the front here turns the gases on and off uh, for the actual combustion part of the process itself it comes with a set of umbilical cables which all connect to the control panel now this looks an awful lot more complicated than it actually is in reality it's relatively simple um, like most things it comes with a handbook and in the handbook it lists all the parameters and the choice of nozzle for the powder that you want to run and the application and then that way it's completely optimized you get the best from it um, and on there we've got the flow meters we have the valves for the settings and we can change uh, the on off mechanism for the powder feed because it is possible to automate uh, this piece of equipment we're using a, a, an old lathe and this is quite common uh, but you can get dedicated turning devices manipulators that sort of thing and it's quite common to have the saddle or the tool post on a lathe uh, and then it, you can you can mount a little attachment which fits in the bottom of the torch so you can mount the torch onto the lathe and use the screw thread to actually carry the torch backwards and forwards if you have a long component a long shaft or a steel mill roll or something like that and then that way the operator doesn't have to hold the torch so that can be automated you bring about a, a nice even coating and of course it's not heavy then for the operator the powder fits into or sits into the hopper at the back and that is fed by compressed air so we have essentially three or four services that go to the to the unit there's obviously electricity to, to, to run the thing there's compressed air to feed the powder oxygen and fuel gas the system will run off different fuel gases 
We're running on propane today, but it will run with acetylene, it will run with MAP gas, it will run with Apache gas, propylene, any number of, uh, of, of, of combustible gases with oxygen. So it's quite a flexible piece of equipment. We then use a secondary uh, system, which is a, a fusing torch, and that we'll use to fuse the powder after we've sprayed it. But we'll show you what that is during the course of the demonstration. So, what we're doing is, is, is the plug. And if you're from the glass container industry, you'll, you'll, you'll recognize that industry uh, immediately. If you're not from the glass container industry, this is a plug. Uh, and these things are sprayed and coated on the ends. Normally, it's very coffin, uh, common uh, within the industry to spray these things with, a, with, with something that, that's around about 40 Rockwell. So we're going to use Colmenoy 42, which covers that range quite comfortably. We're going to spray that on and we'll machine it back uh, and uh, you'll be able to see the finished result. But this is a customer unit, it's also one that we use for uh, exhibitions, so I, I can't do this one unfortunately. So to copy it, to emulate it, we're actually going to use a piece of 25mm a plain carbon steel bar. The process is exactly the same. Just before we start, get uh, get some gloves on, got my glasses ready and my spark lighter. I've already set the parameters up on the torch so I don't have to do that uh, now and we're ready to start. Everything is in the book that you need to know about setting the parameters up on this. That'll be your gas pressures, your the air pressure to drive this. It even tells you the spray distance because that's important it even gives you the linear speed in meters per minute or, or in feet per minute in old money uh, so you can set the speed up on the lathe. right just before we light the torch I should mention that in the handbook on page four there's a, a lighting procedure so we're going to light the torch in accordance with that procedure and it's really easy to follow because as we can see there the lever is in the off position and it's sort of pointing down around about the six o'clock mark if you turn the gases on very slowly you get to around about the five o'clock position and you can actually feel a little bit of resistance like a notch in the valve just hold it there light the flame and then open the valve straight up and it looks something like this right so there we have the torch lit and uh, as is normal we have to make sure that we have a, a strictly neutral flame now we have no valves on the torch itself so all that is set up when we set the gas parameters in accordance with the book on the main control panel so that is fully repeatable if you're on a, a, an automated or a mechanized system um, it's it's easy to achieve and easy to be consistent uh, we just give the component a, a, a brief uh, preheat i'm trying to get this thing up to somewhere between two and three hundred degrees um, with the standoff distance from the torch around about 10 inches or 250 mil in uh, uh, whatever your persuasion i just press the button and uh, introduce the powder you can see we've got very little overspray on this considering we, we, we we're coating a narrow component um, we've got the j3 nozzle in there which is specially designed for doing these types of small components so we don't end up getting through too much powder uh, through overspray so i'm uh, uh, hand spraying the powder so that the coating might not be as uh, even as uh, you would normally expect off an automated system and i've had to make sure that there's powder around on the front so when it's machined back we've got a nice coating all the way around the uh, the outside edge as i've sprayed this by hand uh, it's not the most even coating because this can easily be uh, automated i would also estimate that i've maybe put about half a millimeter of powder on there and now what we'll do is the second part of the process to actually fuse it okay so that's that's the coating in place I'm now going to do the secondary part of the process which is to uh, fuse that coating to the base material to give us something very very close to hundred percent density um, and it's, it's it's a great way to to, to um, uh, create a fully dense a fully dense coating okay okay so the uh, rotational speed of the uh, of the component is the same i didn't have to adjust that for the fusing process uh, at all from 
have it was set during the uh, during the spraying. I've now got a fusion torch, which is a, a, a multi-flame oxyacetylene torch. Always use acetylene for the um, for the fusing, purely and simply because it's still the hottest of all the industrial gas combinations, and the job is that much quicker. So again, the neutral flame, and I'll take the the, the whole of the component up to a, a fusing temperature and then slowly wet the powder along the surface uh, until the whole component is, is, is done basically. You'll be able to tell when it, it's, it starts to wet because it takes on exactly that. It's a wet appearance and starts to become highly reflective. So you can see a reflection of the torch uh, on the surface of the material. It take it, it, when the powder becomes molten and then starts to fuse and um, diffuse into the surface of the, uh, of the base material so we get that density and we get that uh, mechanical combination then of, uh, of, of high strength and, uh, and density so it's uh, just starting to fuse I'll do round at the nose first and then work my way back along the component until as much of the component is done that I actually need Right, so that's it, that's fused out beautifully well, it's nice and clean, I could see uh, no issues with that whatsoever, and I fused all the way around to the front, including the nose, just like you'd have to do on the, on the plug. So that's it, it's the same process, just, just about for any component you want to spray, it's as easy as that. All we did during the fusing was take the temperature up until we could see the powder become molten, it's what we call wetting. And it does look very, very wet. You can see the reflection of the torch in the surface of the coating as it's fusing. And we work it all the way along until we've done whatever it is we need to do. Now what we'll do is we'll let that cool down. And we'll take it up to the machine shop. We'll have the, machine, uh, we'll have the machinist skim the outside so it's a nice clean surface. We'll check the hardness. And we'll bring you the finished result a little bit later on so you can see how clean and tidy it is. It, it's as simple as that. Okay, so if you want to know any more information around about the spray welder or any of the powders or any other applications, just drop us a line. All the numbers and contact details will appear on the screen. Okay, thanks for watching.